Uh, Howdy. Howdy, George. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you guys today? I think we're all doing pretty well. <laughs> Looking at, at how the, the Rams have changed their defense from a year ago, you know, going from Wade Phillips to uh, the new coordinator there, younger guy, Staley, what, what do you see them, like, how do they change what they're doing as it comes to defending tight ends? And, and what might you be expecting for this game Sunday night? Um, well, you know, at the end of the day, they still have Aaron Donald in the middle. So that's, that's still pretty consistent. He's, he's pretty good. Um, but, I mean, I think the structure is mainly staying the same. <clears throat> but you can tell that they've, they're doing a lot of stuff in the secondary. You know, they're hiding their man zone reads. Um, they, Jalen Ramsey is playing, you know, kind of more positions over the field. He's in at nickel sometimes. Um, you know, he covered Ertz a lot when they played the uh, Eagles. <clears throat> um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's still a similar defense, you know, from the front itself. And so, um, you know, game plans that we have used um, and the way we have attacked, I'm not going to say we're going to do the same thing, but there's the similarities there. Um, so it's not like playing an entirely new defense. But, um, you know, it's obviously a challenge because they're playing really well um, on offense and defense. And like I said, when you got 99 in the middle of those things and they're moving him around from – he's playing on the edge now, which I hope he just stays inside. Um, but when he's moving all over the field, you, you're, you've got to be accountable for him because he, uh, he's as big of a disruptor as there is. That's it? Cool. See you guys. Oh, wow. You want to ask another hey, George, one? George, uh, you're, you've been, um, you know, fair, but very direct in some of your comments as far as, you know, the run game has to improve and you know, the offensive captains need to be better and, and, and just things like that, maybe even more so than you have um, last year when you, you were a captain. Do you feel like, you know, there's some guys, you know, Staley's not there, Buckner's not there, uh, Richard Sherman probably can't have the same type of engagement. Uh, do you feel like you need to be a little more, I don't know if outspoken is the word, but just maybe more pointed in, in some of your comments this season? Hmm. That's a good question. I'd say yes and no. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still learning how to be a captain. You know, when you're, when you're blessed would have a guy like Joe Staley and Richard Sherman kind of at the, at the mantle for the last couple of years. Um, you know, guys that have seen the ups and downs of an NFL season, they've been on every kind of team, you know, winners and, you know, losers. Uh, they, they can kind of see how locker rooms work and, you know, communication with coaches and um, just relationships. And so uh, Staley is a guy that I lean on heavily still, and I'm trying to learn from Staley. I ask him questions about things that are going on. Uh, he's been incredibly helpful. Um, but, yeah, I guess at the end of the day, I mean, like I said, I'm one of the four offensive captains now and, you know, technically one of the vets that I definitely do need to be a little bit more direct when it comes to guys and holding guys accountable and, um, <clears throat> luckily at the end of the day, you know, we do have a very accountable team. You know, like I've said, we don't have guys that are trying to jump off the ship, guys that are pointing fingers. Um, you know, we had guys come in today and I thought we had our best practice of the year today and, you know, guys were locked in. Our offense was humming. Um, O-line looked good. We had a great run period. So, uh, I, the thing I love about our team is that we're hungry and we just want to play better. And we know that we're not playing at our best. You know, we don't want to be two and three. Um, and we know that we're not you know, playing at the level that we want to be playing at. So I think that uh, this week has been really good for us. And you know, watching the film and trying to get better from it, I think we've definitely taken a step forward. Hey, George. Oh, howdy. McGlinchey was in there yesterday talking about how people are quick to make the offensive line scapegoats. Can you explain how important it is for all 11 guys to be on the same page and how sometimes it's not necessarily them, it's all 11 guys being in on the same page at the same time? I mean, every single football play, if all 11 guys are on the same page and one guy messes up or does the wrong thing, you know, sometimes you get away from that, you know, get away with it. Like if a wide receiver, you know, reads the coverage wrong and doesn't crack on the safety, you know, fitting in and Raheem might make a guy miss and it still works out. But it's obvious, it's way more obvious when it happens internally. Like if the why, if, if me, if I miss a block or if Juice misses a block or if Lakin misses something, it's more obvious when it's internal down there. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is. We're, we're obviously making mistakes and we're making easy mistakes. Um, we're playing behind the chains way too much. And in our offense, that's kind of difficult us for, for us to come back from. Um, so whether it's communication issues or, you know, just doing the little things, 
like I said, this week, we've, I think we've definitely taken a step forward in both of those. And uh, I think we're going to put some better football on tape this week. Georgia, you mentioned so far this, this being a good week of practice. Kyle Shanahan mentioned it earlier that you guys haven't had all – uh, your quarterback and all of your skill guys on the practice field really before this week. How, how much can you gain um, in terms of getting uh, getting back on track with just one week of practice? It's a step in the right direction. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, like, you need game reps. That's what you need. And, um, you know, every team's dealing with it. But when you don't have OTAs, you don't have, like, a full training camp with preseason games, it's hard for rookies and young guys to, you know, you know, grasp everything and understand the intensity of an NFL season and all that's required of you. Um, <clears throat> but I think you, you can definitely get better. And I think, like I said, we have gotten better. And it's all it really is, is, you know, if you want to get better and that that's what football is. If you put your mind to it and you put your passion in it and you put your heart in it, then you definitely come out better. I mean, I feel like I've gotten better this week. You know, I was obviously I wasn't happy with my performance last week or, you know, even the week before that. Um, and how do you get better is game reps. And, you know, you got to start with in practice, obviously. But um, the more you play, the better you get. And I know that we took a step forward. Could we do more for George? Thanks, Petey. You caught, you caught 15 of 15 passes for 183 yards two weeks ago. I know. I wasn't very happy with my run game, though. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about Joe Staley. And are, are you able to kind of share anything that, you know, you ask him and, and sort of the advice that he's giving you. Um, I don't know, one of the th things I learned from Staley was um, my rookie year, um, I was terrified of Joe Staley. I think I've said that a couple times. Like, he would come in and he would, he'd be kind of a prick sometimes. And, you know, I wouldn't really understand that. And then there are times you'd see him, he'd be like the happiest guy ever. And you're like, well, I mean, like, what's wrong with him? But really, when you think about it, it's – the way he holds guys accountable, no matter who you are. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're the QB. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, DeForest Buckner. It doesn't matter if you're Eric Armstead. It doesn't matter if you're George Kittle. Joe would hold you accountable, and he'd make sure you heard his point and what he, um, what he thought was required of you on a daily basis. <clears throat> and so that's one thing Joe, you know, told me, and you know, I talked to him after last game, and he was just like, look, like, you have to hold people accountable, and you have to tell them that you have to hold them to the highest standard because – that's what we've done for the last three years is hold guys to an incredibly high standard. And, you know, I'm not saying we're lacking in that at all. I'm just saying we're trying to find our footing as a team. And I, you know, as captains too, like I said, when you lose Joe Staley and, you know, Sherm hasn't been here really. Um, when you lose two guys that you look up to, it's, it's it is hard. And, um, and like I said, I have to be a better captain. I'm still learning how to do that. And I think I'm getting better at that every single day. Um, you know, Fred Warner's getting better at it every single day. Uh, all our guys are. And so it's just, it's a daily process and, I think we're going to improve. George, why are you confident your team can turn this season around and make the playoffs? Great. I haven't talked to you in a while, man. What's up? You good? Oh, they muted you. Well, uh, there you are. There you are. How are you doing? Though? I'm batting a thousand, George. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing really well. Can you ask that again? Sorry. I got excited when I saw your face. You look nice today, too, dog. <laughs> I dressed up for you. <laughs> Why are you confident your team can turn this season around and make the playoffs? I think the biggest thing um, that I've seen is just like the guys we have in the locker room, you know, and our coaching staff. I believe in our coaching staff. I think Coach Shanahan um, is incredible what he does. He game plans so well, and he puts guys in positions to succeed. Um, and then the locker room, you have, a, you have a group of guys that want to get better every single day. You don't have guys that are jumping off the ship. You don't have guys that are pointing the finger at each other. And you also have guys that we do hold each other accountable. Like <clears throat> you have conversations like, hey, why do we suck? Or why did we suck on this play? And we talk about it and we figure it out. You know, you don't have guys saying, oh, that was your fault. That wasn't my fault. And so we're all in the, we're all heading in the right direction. We're going in the same direction. And I know we haven't played our best football the last two weeks. Um, but we, like I said, we did take a huge step forward this week, I believe. And, um, you know, when you got young guys at wide receiver, you know, we're, we're, rel we're relying heavily on Debo and Brandon. And um, they're, they're just going to get better every single week they, they get to play football. And when I see those guys go out there and they make those plays and they have the confidence in themselves, it makes me excited. And they're a big reason why I think we can turn this thing around and win some football games. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Grant. I've missed you.